Okay, I called the Historic Resource Commission January 4th, 2022, meeting to order at 6.02 p.m. I am going to take roll to state for our minutes, the present commission members, Jerome Bias, Matthew Haley. Here. Sephora Clark Baldwin. Here. Karen Chin. Here. Bonnie Whitaker. Here. Jeanette Baudry. Here. And Carrie Worthy is here. Let the records show that we have all commission members in attendance, which <coughs> provides a quorum for our meeting. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. To the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We'll have a moment of silence. Thank you. The Historic Resource Commission is charged with promoting, enhancing, and preserving the character of the historic district, as well as landmarks, including the Courthouse Square Historic District. We will now consider the minutes from November 2nd, 2021, meeting of the HRC. The minutes include findings of fact and conclusions of law. Are there any corrections for any, from any of the commissioners? I have a motion to accept the minutes. I'll make a motion to accept the minutes of the last meeting. All right. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Passes. Thank you very much. We'll now move to new business. Our first item is the hearing of any certificate of appropriateness applications. Before us this evening is two. Therefore, we will now begin the evidentiary hearing for the one item listed on the agenda. As a quasi-judicial proceeding, the HRC is not setting policy, nor are we soliciting public opinion on the desirability of an application. The HRC hears and considers evidence presented and applies the standards set forth in the guidelines and standards of the specific historic district for that application. The HRC must make its decisions upon competent material and substantial evidence to determine the facts of hearing. The HRC will use judgment and discretion to apply the standards contained in the relevant guidelines to the application. The commissioners in voting for an item shall not have a fixed opinion, not susceptible to change, have a conflict of interest, have engaged in ex parte kind of communication regarding the application. This meeting is open to the public, but participation is limited to parties withstanding to participate who wish to provide comment testimony regarding the proposal. If you will be speaking as a witness, Please focus on the facts and how they relate to the relevant historic district standards and guidelines, not personal preference, hearsay, or opinion. At this time, anyone providing testimony for COA 2116, please come forward to be sworn in. Testimony you're about to give is the truth. You solemnly swear to speak but nothing but the truth. What is All right. Thank you.
I now move to open the public hearing. May I have a, a second? A second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. The commission is now in public <coughs> hearing for COA 2116. Mary, will you please present the staff report for COA 2116? once I sit down. For COA 2116 at 200 North Main Street, the historical inventory information is from circa 1906 and it is pivotal. It was originally the Mont White Theater and now is the cooperative. This is a, rich, a richly detailed three-story with blonde brick building on, on the east elevation and on the cutaway corner facing the main Harden intersection and red brick on the southwest Harden Street elevation. Contrasting shades of brick and rusted stone accentuate the building's numerous decorative features, including round arch transoms at the first and second stories, belt courses between the floors and elaborate corbels occurring at the roof line. The proposal before you is the applicant, applicant is requesting to install screening to conceal six HVAC units the screening will consist of a wooden frame with a metal support frame. The covering material will have an artistic rendering on the exterior. With the council's approval on February 9th, 2021, the city manager was authorized to enter into a lease agreement with Carolina Property Holdings for the joint use of the alleyway located at 200 North Main Street. Graham, Graham Recreation and Parks in conjunction with downtown development leads the physical components of the project. This partnership has the goal of activating the alleyway as a pocket park, and that is defined as a small park accessible to the general public. The activation of the pocket park is occurring in phases, and at this time, the process is working towards the completion of visual aesthetic. The application details the installation of a wall with an artistic rendering to conceal the existing six HVAC units. And I think as the applicant comes forward, we'll get into more details about those sizes. I don't move to my seat now. <laughs> uh, the commission members have any questions for staff? No. Okay. Um, has any commission members had any ex parte communication? No. No. I, th I have, and so I'm, I feel like I need to um, not be in the discussion. I was in a meeting from the very beginning when we were talked about this park and we talked about this specific uh, project of the park. So um, I won't um, partake in the, in the discussion. Hmm. Well, the, uh, please state your name and address for the record. Do you have any? Uh, whoever's going to talk first. I'll open Brian Fawcett, City of Graham Recreation Director, 1697 Challenge Drive here in Graham. I doubt I will add anything to the discussion tonight, but I'm here to answer any questions about the project <coughs> overall, if there are any. But um, we have contracted with David Nance to construct the screening, and I will pass it over to David. Well, my name is David Nance, 1858 South Main Street in Graham. So David, if you'll just go over the project and then the commission members will ask you questions if they have any. Okay, I've got, when you can see on the, the slide there, it says what the metal frame will look like and it's constructed out of a galvanized metal uh, structural steel and so those are going to be placed into the concrete so my proposal is that that the screen will be constructed of this two inch foam and the idea is to uh, 
show two different images. If you're coming in from the east side, you'll see one thing. And if you're coming in from the west side, you'll see another thing. And it, as you walk by it, it kind of changes. I mean, you can see in this, the way this looks, it's, it's like that. When you're walking by it, you know, it kind of blends. And as you move by, the flowers will kind of move a little bit, you know, cause they change, you know, a little bit. So, so it goes from the sunrise to sunset, you know, depending on which side you're coming in. So it kind of changes back and forth. Is that clear? <laughs> <clears throat> And one of the reasons we're using this phone is that these uh, these eight four foot panels need to be removed, removable, so we can make it so that you can access the HVAC units if you needed to. So it'll come off in like a four foot panel, be able to access something, and it makes it you know lightweight to handle. I mean, this is the actual size and then it'll be a seven foot tall piece. I guess that's it. Okay. Do any commission members have the question? Uh, I have one question. The um the polystrain foam board that you're using, how durable is it? I know you're gonna put a clear coat on it. I saw that in yeah. the in the notations and stuff. I mean, it's how durable is it in terms of extreme sunlight, and I mean, is it going to fade? Is it rain? Gonna... All that stuff will not affect it at all. Every piece. Okay. So it's like this is a piece that I did years ago. It's been sitting on my deck now for four years. And this is the way the uh, the the Love Graham sign was made out of the same material. Oh, okay. So mm -hmm. I've been. Wow. You know, it's it's really brittle. I mean, it's good and hard once it bakes on, you know, for a while. So it's, I mean, it. you could take a sledgehammer to it and it would break. I mean, it's, it's yeah. tough stuff, but I mean, it's still, as far mm -hmm. as the using the material, it was because it's so lightweight and right. strong and durable, you know. And that you can pop them off and you can get move the whole panel. It'll be in panels of four of these. So it'll be like one piece that would come off, you know, okay. and set back mm -hmm. in. Oh, yeah. I have okay. a question. You said they need to be removable. Is that for maintenance of the air conditioning? Exactly. Okay. Yeah. That's only. And you don't literally bake that. I mean. I mean, it's just the sun. The would, sun would and, do that. Okay. and Yeah. And the, the type paints I've been okay. using are, yeah. you know, they're outdoor okay. paints that have been used by muralists for years. So it's a very durable paint. I do have a question. So when you're removing them, um, how frequently is this? And, and do you have to replace it with new materials each time? Or it's just the same material being taken off and put back on? Access and then you put this thing back. And frequency should only be when it needs to be basically replaced. Uh, there should be enough space behind the units for service to be performed without removing the panels. But when replacement comes up, we do not know the age of those units or mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. service of them. So that's why Mr. Nance is making these removable. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So if the panels are coming down, will they, for, for removal of the unit and the panels are taken down, will they have to take the frame down too? I think the frame would be <coughs> like it is. Okay. It's, um, I can show this one. Oh, yeah. And Even if you, you might not have to take all of them, you know, you get to disconnected from your bottom supports. Mm -hmm. Karen, do you have any questions? No, you've answered my questions that I had. <laughs> Matthew, do you have any questions? No. Is there anyone else that has any more questions? All right. Um,
Does anyone else have supporting evidence in favor of the COA 2116? Brian, do you have anything else to say? No, sir. <clears throat> okay. I will close the floor for public comment. I ask for a second for a vote. Second that we close the floor. All right, I have a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. It passes, thank you very much. All right, does anyone have any discussion? I would, I'll just say I was surprised when I walked back there how wide that, um, I didn't realize the alley was that wide. So I guess I'd never really gone back there. So uh, I think it'll, it'll be a nice size park. So. Anything else from anybody? All right. Um, discuss the findings of fact, Mary's staff report. She outlined under the building guidelines, exterior colors paint removal, paint techniques, and mechanical systems. And under the new construction guidelines, the materials and textures context. I will, uh, if you all have anything else you want to add to that, I will take note of it. Anyone? No, no, no. Okay, so I need to have a motion uh, for fact. I'll make a motion for fact. Okay. Um, there's one on there. Can you? That's right under. It's on my. It's the last paragraph on that. Uh, okay. Uh, I move that the commission find as fact that the proposed project COA 2116 submitted by Brian Fawcett for 200 North Main Street, if constructed according to the plans reviewed at this meeting, is congruous with the special character of the historic district because COA 2116 request is consistent with the special character of the neighboring properties and the historic district as a whole and is consistent with design standards. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, exterior colors. Um, painting techniques, materials and textures content. Okay, thank you. Do I have a second? I'll second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. It passes, thank you very much. Now I call for a motion to approve COA 2116 as presented. I move that the commission approve the application as presented. Okay. If conditions are being applied safely. And we don't have any conditions. Done. Thank you, do I have a second? I'll second. second. Okay. Um, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Passes. Thank you very much. We will now proceed to COA 2117. At this time, anyone providing testimony for COA 2117, please come forward to be sworn in. <laughs> I do swear to tell the truth, but nothing but the truth. So help you, God. I do. Thank you. Okay. I now move to open the public hearing. May I have a second? I'll second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Pass. Uh, the commission is now in a public hearing for COA 2117. Mary, will you please present the staff report for COA 2117? 
for COA 2117, the applicant is Lisa Clapp and her business is located at 10 Northeast Court Square. The um, historical inventory information is that the building is um, a circa of 1903 and it is identified as contributing. It is an L-shaped single story brick building with a shed roof. Two rows of brick corbelling carry along the front facade. Display windows are set in plain surrounds. The entrance is compressed or composed of a single door with side lights. Z. T. Hadley Jeweler is set in tile at the entrance. The proposal is that the applicant is requesting to install two vinyl signs. This is a new business that is um, occupying this location, and it is in line whenever a new business opens that they request to post the name of their business and their hours. As we move forward, you'll hear that the materials being requested for the sign are vinyl. Thank you. Does any commission members have a, any questions for staff? Oh. All right. Does any commission members have any ex parte communication? No. No. Did want to reference what's in the uh, handbook. Okay. As far as the material I'm being sorry, used, she's how asking does it you a question, with Mary. The handbook? Ask me your question again. Yes, as far as the materials that's being presented, how does it comply with the handbook? It's in compliance. It's in compliance. That's what I thought I had read today, but I wanted just to make sure. Yes. All right, thank you for that question. And I'll go back to anyone having ex parte communication. Okay, great, thank you. Uh, will the applicant come, come forward, please? Please state your name and address for the record. Um, yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, may I have a second to open the public hearing? A second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. It passes, thank you. <clears throat> uh, if you'll state your name and address. Yes, it's Lisa Clapp at 10 Northeast Court Square here in Graham. Great. So, Lisa, if you'll just uh, go over what you're requesting for the, and they'll ask any questions. Okay. Yeah. Basically, um, a vinyl side siding sign on the left side, um, one window, and then the hours will be on the left side of the door on that smaller window. Um, the existing information on the door will be removed. The door will be plain. Um, right. And the dimensions they are showing on the left um, are correct. <clears throat> so it'll be placed as it is kind of copy and pasted on the one there on the right. Okay. Does any uh, commission members have any questions? I do. Um, so this is gonna be a permanent affixation you're talking about of a vinyl sign on the outside? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it can be removed if ever needed to be and, you know, changed into anything else. But yeah, it's just the vinyl lettering. Yeah, a sign company will be doing this. Matthew, do you have any questions? No. Uh, Bonnie, do you have any questions? No, sir. Jeanette? No. Um, Karen? No questions. Sephora? No questions. Jerome, do you have any more questions? Okay. Um, so that's all we need. Thank you very much. I will ask to close the, uh, the public hearing. Do I have a second? A second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Passes. Thank you very much. <sighs> I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Okay. Discuss the findings of fact. 
Um, in Mary's staff report, she outlined under the landscape features, the sign contacts. Um, I will take note of any additional guideline contacts if you uh, want to add to that list. Anyone have anything? I have nothing to add. Okay. Nothing to add. With uh, no discussion, may I have a motion of finding a fact? I'll do it. All right, Matthew. I move that the commission find as fact that the proposed project COA 2117 submitted, submitted by Lisa Clapp for 10 Northeast Court Square is constructed according to the plans reviewed at this meeting, is congruous with the special character of the historic district because COA 2117 request is consistent with the special character of the neighboring properties in the historic district as a whole and is consistent with the design standards. Okay. Landscape features is signage. Great. Thank you. Do I have a second? A second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. It passes. Thank you very much. Uh, I'd like to call for a motion to approve COA 2117 as presented. Move that the commission approve the application as presented. COA 2117. Okay. And do we need to add the a second? Oh, okay. Is there a second? I'll second. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. It passes. Thank you very much. Um, so our next item under new business is the annual election of officers. Mary's staff, will you coordinate over the call for nomination for chair? <clears throat> So just a little background, you guys may be thinking, well, didn't we just do this? <laughs> and the answer is yes. But in the ordinance, it says that annually a chair and a vice chair will be elected um, during the December meeting. And since we canceled our December meeting, it is before you tonight in January. So the way that we're going to do this is it will be um, audible again, since um, Debbie's not here as recorder to do a um, handwritten ballot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down the dais and ask each commission member if they have someone that they want to put forward. If you want to put yourself forward, that's fine. If you want to abstain and you don't have anyone you want to put forward, that's fine too. So first before you, we are putting forward the nomination for the position of chair. Okay. Any questions before we get started? First, you're just nominating. All right. Um, Mr. Haley, do you have anyone that you would like to put forward? No. Miss Whitaker. Um, just like to keep the same. Okay. Um, can forth. I ask, go back and say that? <laughs> Carrie. Yeah. yeah. Okay. There we go. Jeanette. Carrie. Oh my God. <laughs> Carrie, would you like to present someone? <laughs> no, I'll abstain. Okay. Miss, keep, keep it as it is. Okay. You're worthy. Okay. Retain Chairworthy, please. Okay. Chairworthy, is this your desire or would you like for us to revote and um, put forward put forward the selection of a different nominee? Um, I'll I'll do it again. Okay. Gosh, it sounds like he's under duress. <laughs> <laughs> well, I do have a little off here. <laughs> okay. Mm. All right. Well. If we could confirm the nominee, if all in favor say aye for voting Carrie as the chair. Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, so our record will aye. state that it was unanimous. Okay, well, thank you all. <laughs> all right, I, I know it's a little awkward and <coughs> I put you guys on the spot and I apologize. Um, now we're gonna move forward and we're gonna put forth a commission member, whether it be yourself or um, someone sitting next to you or across from you for the position of vice chair. Currently, Jeanette Beaudry holds this position. Um, we'll go in reverse order this time. Ms. I'm, Chen. I'd like to retain Jeanette where she is. Okay. As vice chair. Okay. Jerome? I'll retain Jeanette Beaudry. 
Okay. Support. And Jeanette. Carrie. Jeanette. Jeanette, are you in favor? <laughs> it's hard, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yes, I'll. Okay. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> and then Mrs. Whitaker. Uh, retain Jeanette Beaudry. And Mr. Haley. Same. Okay. Once again, you guys are making this extremely easy tonight, <laughs> although I think our nominees feel a little flushed. <laughs> so for the record, we have Jeanette Beaudry that has been put forward for our vice chair for this year. <clears throat> if all in favor will say aye. 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 Any opposed? Let the record stand that Jeanette was unanimously voted in as vice chair. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, so um, is there updates from the staff? The first update that I want to present before you guys is on COA 2115. That was a minor COA for the installation of an awning. So you will start to see some work take place at half by records. The awning color will be black, which is an approved um, HRC color. And I hope that we'll see that this will enhance their seating outside. Mm -hmm. And also, I don't know if you guys have um, been in any businesses on that side of the street, but they really get sun baked. Oh, so the owners are also hoping that they'll have some reprieve from the sun. So I just wanted to update you on that progress. I know there were a couple of questions, so I'll entertain those now. Yes, I do have a question about COA 2113, and it's just uh, we had voted via email the color of the kiosk for the li Graham Public Library. And then my other part of that was uh, if we had made a decision not to attach it to the brick, but to have it freestanding. So I have not received word about how it will be affixed. I will follow up with the applicant. And then for the color, I'm going to confirm it through an email, <laughs> but I want to say that was unanimous for the gray. Maybe like one or two had said the blue. So I will confirm that to you guys um, tomorrow in an email. But if memory serves me right, it was gray. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I have a couple of things. Um, one is um, when we talked about uh, removal of the uh, building, and I don't remember the COA of it, uh, part of that was that the staff was going to talk to the uh, owner about trying to find somebody that might would take the building over and renovate it. Uh, do you know if the staff oh, have? Yes, uh, there was some. Communication relayed to Mr. Holt Sr. and Jr. And it was clearly stated, I can send you guys an email identifying what was communicated. The onus is on the property owner to reach out and do that research if that is their desire. And then they have the 365 days. Uh -huh. We have not heard anything back. Okay. This is the property that they were proposing to make out of a parking lot. Yes. Yeah. Yep. The corner of East Elm and Marshall. Right. Um, can, I, can I add one thing? Yeah. Uh, is it possible to ask them to secure that building? The front door is open. It appears to be open at least. Okay. <laughs> I, I have noticed that they put up a posted sign saying, you know, no trespassing, um, but by securing to make sure that doors are closed and locked. Okay. Was there another question about that property? Okay. What was your next question? So the other one was if we could have the staff bring before us at the next meeting, the minors, what, what is, because for some, in my mind, I felt like signage was a minor unless there was a, someone wanting to do something that was beyond what our, rec, our regulations were. Um, and so if we could uh, just go over what the minors are so we could all be on the same page. So I'll ask for a little bit of clarity, but before I do that, if each of the commission members will turn to C-6. Yeah, I'm seeing it. 
I didn't bring my notebook. Okay. Um, and so that has a table that says normal maintenance, no COA required, and it says minor work and then major work. Um, and so what I'm hearing you say, Chairworthy, is that um, for clarification about the minor and major, which is currently in your handbook, I feel like you're also saying that there may have been the opportunity for signage to be underneath minor work. My yeah, my understanding that it was under minor work, and unless they chose to do something different. Okay, um, and you guys know that we've had turnover um, with new hires, and with new hires, there's new opportunities. There's um, just different experiences. So, in talking with our planning director, he um, would like to sit down with me and evaluate our current list. And then sit before you guys sort of the opportunity of a new proposal. So if that is the desire of Chairworthy and the commission, then I'll be happy to bring that before you in February. So I get how do y'all feel about that? I'm bringing it up, but whatever you all <laughs> feel. Uh, to, to go over the minor, minors are the ones that people can go to before the staff and they don't have to they come to, to, to right, the full right. commission. Uh, I think it's a good the, idea to clarify it. Right. Okay. And, then, that's, and then there may be the opportunity like tonight where we had the signage <laughs> reviewed as a major <laughs> that wouldn't come before you. In right, the and you guys could do it. Right. So it helps expedite yeah. the process for the applicant. Um, and then you guys are always that next layer. If there is something at the staff level that we feel like we don't have purview in permitting, and that table is the guide on. So, can we can I uh, point of, need a point of clarity? Okay. Uh, the sign request today. Mm -hmm. Why was that a major instead of a minor? That is what. That's what he's asking. We had. Yeah in our notes as a major was, there was no notation that that had been changed to be acceptable to be a minor so it may have happened prior with the commission as carrie you know has had lots of experience um being on here but for myself being the staff liaison for justin being over it we were not aware of it and unless there's an amendment to your handbook and it's in writing and it's dated we have to follow what is written. Within well, I was the wondering, I'm looking at the last last line of minor, minor work. I didn't know if it, if, that, if it fell underneath that. Uh, alteration of permanent sign located in Article 10 of Graham City. It's not an alteration, it's new. Okay. Because new is on C7. Yeah. With major work in the table. Uh -huh. Okay. Could I, could I make a request that um, we could run the minors through the committee only when um, there is other business where they are not mine. I mean, because other than that, we may not meet. I, I don't know. You're, 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 you're seeing where this may be going. You're right. right. Yeah. Um, the the I less want to items, eliminate the board. The less items underneath a major, the less um, yeah. quasi judicial hearings you will have. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And, right. and so I would say, unless our calendar is full, um, we can hear the minors as well as the majors. But when we have a full uh, plate, the, other than that, the board would meet and then it could become obsolete. I mean, well, um, if I'm hearing you correctly, you're basically saying that you the consistency is preferable to have monthly meetings. Mm -hmm. um, now, where we would have the opportunity is if we had no majors but if i had received minors and present that share worthy and he's heard it's your desire that you have updates it wouldn't be a hearing but it would be a presentation because as it states between the two minors are staff approval majors are quasi-judicial so the presentation would still call for the board to meet or not it could yes so if you guys desire to have consistent monthly meetings, yes. then that's the path that we would go. If there were no minors and no majors and no updates or discussions, I communicate with the chair, he could communicate with the co-chair and you guys, and then you can do, like we did the doodle poll, <coughs> saying, yes, we want to vote. I mean, yes, we want to meet or no, we don't. 
I just like the more consistency so we would know. Right. Right on. I mean, I agree with the consistency of meeting. I just think, um, you know, sometimes smaller items for the, the people that are trying to get the work done that they're having to wait for us to meet and then to prove and then to yeah. do the work. And if it's a smaller item. Yeah, I agree. But, I mean, um, if you, if, you know, if um, the staff could get together the list of what they feel or majors and minors, that would be great. And we'll do that. And so you guys will, pre I'll present it um, February. And then as the board, you guys can decide if you want to think about it and then come back in March and vote, or if you're ready, you've vetted it out, you're ready to make a motion on it that evening, you can always table. You don't have to feel like you're, um, you know, being told information and you haven't had it let it sink in enough the next meeting. Um, so the next item um, that I have for you guys was about the historic inventory. Mm -hmm. And I apologize, I thought I'd sent you the email. So I sent that to you late this afternoon. Some of you may have seen it, some of you may not. And then in further discussion with Justin, I learned that a letter <laughs> had been sent to former Mayor Peterman whenever it was under his purview. And to Justin, however, the letter got lost in the shuffle. And so I have a copy of the letter. If it's okay to approach, I will give each of you a copy of the letter and it has a map. So then we can have a little bit of discussion around that if any of you have any questions. Is that okay? Yes. Thank you.
I hope you guys are concluding what I was able to send to you prior to the meeting. Um, <clears throat> were there fact sheets? And you may read them and it feels like they're very repetitive. There's a lot of language that is repeated. And um, so there's four fact sheets. And basically this letter summarizes it, in my opinion, yeah. as to our process. Um, on the front page, I am going to direct your attention to the last paragraph where it reads, the next step yeah, in the yeah. process is preparation of a formal national registry nomination document. This is a written research report prepared to the national register standards. And then it goes on and it talks about those fact sheets um, that I emailed to you. Mm -hmm. So whenever I saw that, I immediately thought of some of you going, well, where are we in the process? Has it been before the committee? Because it says they meet thrice times a year, but they don't mm -hmm. identify the times. So I reached out to our hired consultant who I wasn't able to connect with today to learn that answer. So whenever the consultant calls me back, I will email you guys what I learned. I anticipate what I will hear is that because SHPO approved it, nor it's been approved at North Carolina, it's on the study list that's being presented to the National Registry. That is all moving forward. We just need the National Registry Committee to meet and say, yes, it's approved. Now, where it gets a little bit more into the details is the report, it was also included and it talks about the study list application. And that's where it's identified for the decrease and the increase. And I was on a Zoom call with SHIP, a representative from SHPO and um, our consultant. It was not a call where the city had the opportunity to say, this is our desire. It was a call saying these were our findings and this is what's being presented. <clears throat> and so it was more just of an awareness. And what I heard when you're looking at the map, the reason for the decrease towards West Elm is because of the disconnect. There's not continuous. There's not properties that one after the other fit the guidelines. Because you may say, well, if there's a handful, why would we want to keep them in the district? It is underneath their um, thought process that your district is congruous. We say that you know, a lot, that there's that continuity, that it's not a missing property, a missing property, oh, and then here's a historic property. And then the properties in that area, some of them have had changes that no longer are in alignment with that historic preservation. And then if you kick back over and you look at the yellow, where we increase, you may scratch your head and go, but wait a minute, are these properties really in line with historic preservation? And um, so by our opinions and standards, probably not. But when you go to the standards of the continuous and continuity and the age of the buildings, that's where yeah. the box gets checked as yes. And that is about as much as I know. So um, this, and I will try and answer questions. So there, uh, this map is what they have presented to the people. Mm -hmm. And it, once they, we hear from them, yes or no, if they say yes, then this it will be our new map. Correct. And can you tell me, I'm trying to look and I really don't know, like this whole, it's hard to tell what they've added. All right, so if, let's just start <coughs> from the Eastern border, the first yellow. Um, I believe it reads track F. So that pulls in the Graham tractor building. Okay. And property. Right. Okay. Because okay. you don't, even though there's not a building at the corner of East Elm and Marshall, uh -huh. you don't exclude that because you keep the continuous <clears throat> pattern. If you go to north, where I think that says addition area A, 
Yeah. That is going to pull in the crematory. It's going to pull in the city parking lot, the farm credit building, uh -huh. and I believe it's a residence. So what I did not print for you guys, and I apologize because just trying to save trees, is whenever you look back on your email, what I sent you, mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. shows the study area. So like this shows those pictures and it talks about okay. its relevancy. Okay. Okay. But they all have been presented to the state historic preservation. Yes. So the, you're just the, trying to make the state is the first you agree. Um, check mark mm -hmm. and they were in agreement and so they give their signature and their stamp mm -hmm. and then it goes to the national so then we'll be notified yay or nay and, and we'll get new maps basically yeah okay um and then as you come to the western side um you're looking at the alamance county building there at west elm and maple and then as you go up um, across the street is another county building. And then it's the Maple Street Tavern. Um, and then I believe it's an insurance. Again, they viewed that from the Zoom call when they were giving us awareness. They, they felt like that was a void when that's, to fill that in, it's more continuous in your mapping and in your locations. And then again, above my um, education and understanding of historic preservation, but materials, age of the building, windows, et cetera, yeah. play into that. And then as you come um, south, that's on our property at the corner of pulling in the um, Touch by Angels building. Mm -hmm. Where's this? So that's over by the, the, the EMS, the, yeah. the fire department here here on our campus yeah right so here opposite yeah yeah would be pine and maple mm -hmm. what's in the area that's getting cut out there yeah what is that what area? is that the reduction. so that is the parking <coughs> the parking lot across the street so across not directly across from us because it's bank of america but if you go behind bank of america there's a large parking lot to those Where buildings. The attorneys are yes. Buildings. Uh -huh. Yes. Okay. Help me read that. I've got it. I'm looking at right here. The boundary decrease. Two areas. Yes. Were recommended. Yes. In these reduction areas, formerly contributing houses were demolished or relocated. Yes. First reduction area on West Elm Street, in the former location of uh, Block 87, is now a surface parking lot. So the second one was West Pine Street. And um, it gives a, the former numbers for that. Uh, 19, 1985 addition to a 1974 building next door and outside the district boundary replaced. And that was a surface parking lot and was replaced by two residences. So there were parking lots. So that's, so it was like, it was th like 36.1 square feet and like, or acres and like 67. Uh, of its parking lot. 60, and not yeah. Contributing. Yes. So I thought, why are they taking them out while well, they're parking lots? Which, uh -huh. yeah. But to me, you know, it, it, there's nothing there unless you would put up a, a marker that said former site that, sure, it had some relevance. And those of you who live here in Graham, you know, you would know if that would be something that was appropriate. But it, now that it's a parking lot, that I thought, okay, what are they taking not. out? There's a new person. I'm wondering, okay, what are they removing? Right. And it's it was a parking well, lot. My question about the park, the parking lot, um, on <coughs> or the Pine Street and Maple intersection, with the reduction. West uh, Pine and West Pine, yeah. Mm -hmm. West Pine and Maple. I guess it's Maple. Yes, Maple. Um, isn't part of the um, purview of the HRC? that even if it's an empty space, when they build something new there, we get some continuity comments on that was being built. Is that? A new construction, yes. New construction, yes. Yes. So that seems to be, that seems to be part of the 
ongoing stretch of the historic district from the North Point over to the South. And so in 10 years or 20 years when someone comes along and wants to put a whatever and ever there, that would, it's, it is part of the historic district, the, the, the continuity there, that would give them the opportunity to build whatever they want there and not be within the continuity of the historic district. You're not wrong. Um, and I understand what you're bringing forth. We didn't have an opportunity to voice that. I know, it seems kind of weird that we- And so I'll ask the consultants. Like why didn't, why didn't we, they bring it to, I kept thinking they were gonna to. bring it to us prior to them I agree with Carrie. Yeah, and, no, and then surprised. we were going to discuss it and it's like we were totally left out of the conversation i feel very uncomfortable with what has happened and that we've had a we fired a consultant they did a report and the body that hired it never got a chance to see it yeah. before it was turned in and i don't know that that and, I, and so i asked justin yeah. he said he didn't see anywhere in like the rfp or in what was presented. If they were to bring it back. Right, right. And so I don't know if that's just the practice of how you conduct the inventory. I will ask those questions and learn. And I encourage you guys, as you are mulling this over, shoot me an email with your specific, that would help me tremendously. I'm your voice. So let me um, know what you're thinking. Is it possible to slow this process down and say, wait, can we at least talk about this before the states? I'll ask. So take excises it. Yeah. I'll ask. That is a significant. I have a feeling that it will probably be a no. Uh, yeah. But I will ask. Yeah. I know that there was a deadline to present the information yes. so yes. that we could get it in. I remember that part. That was the October deadline, and that but, was at the state level. Right. <coughs> yeah, it never came back to this board. And so, you know, the question may be. Is there an opportunity to put a letter of statement from the historic commission with the application as it goes to the national review? Might be a that, that may be an opportunity. Mm -hmm. Mary, on, on uh, this national register sheet fact fact sheet four, uh, there are several pages of it and item C on it, and that's where I saw the approximate acreage was three point one six. 3.1 acres is total for revised boundary, 6.7 additional acre area, 1.4 reduction area. Right. So, and, and you're right, there is a lot of repetition on, on here, but to try I to keep your thoughts. I, I support yeah. the comments that have been made, and, and if, if, it, if they did the report and then passed it on to our higher headquarters. I'm not happy, but if that was the rules they were to follow, right. that was the rules and they right. followed it. Right. So right. right right now, if I could just take some notes from what I'm hearing and you guys um, confirm mm -hmm. is through the process, was there ever a time when there should have been a presentation before HRC? There should have been. Right. There was know. a meeting that they, and one of the, the presentation that they gave us, Right. They said they were going to come back and present this to us again. Well, the consultant more. had made their uh, observation and made sure that the properties met the criteria, then they would come back. And they never I did. don't think they came and back. I, and I will learn what that answer yeah. is. Okay. Um, second, if because the process has moved where SHPO has given their stamp and it's moving to National Registry, is there an opportunity for you to put a letter of statement asking to Jerome's point about future new build so close mm -hmm. and yeah. how that was in and now it's being removed. Mm -hmm. So just a statement outlining your voice. That we just basically that we would like that decrease we don't like. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah, it kind of leaves us with our faces hanging out. Mm -hmm. you know, in the future. Well, and you guys haven't brought it up, but I asked um, right here at the corner of um, <coughs> Pine and North Main, one of our flagship entry 
buildings is not included in the historic district. Which, uh, which, um, that's where Mr. Haley's wife's business is. Um, and I mean, which building is this? Right across the street where the gray um, building? Shamrock Nutrition awesome, yeah. and that's, that's, not in that's not in there. That's not in there. Why not? The, Why not? The only part that's included in it is the one on. No. So the only part that applies to that building is the one right on Main, if there's signage or things like that. But when it comes to Pine Street, where my wife's business is, it technically doesn't fall under the. It stops there at that barber shop. So if you look at the map, yeah, turn, turn it mm -hmm. with this piece at your navel, mm -hmm. um, and right. To the right of that yellow line that is north main street and then mm -hmm. the cross is pine so as you continue up north main and you look to your right the building that we're talking about is not included not included it's not included well, that's not it good. seems like crazy it should be included right but they okay so to your point uh, mr haley the reason why um someone has come before the commission relative to the building was to receive funding. Yes. So whenever you receive funding, um, you come before the commission, but- right. um, That was for the painting of the building. Right. Yeah. 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 And that was through the business beautification grant. That's the only eligibility. There's no eligibility through the facade grant. Right. Right. So to be the, the grant they applied for in God, I assume, was you don't have to be in a historic district to get that grant? No, no, mm -mm. not just for the grant, beautification, just for the facade grants. Yeah. And yeah, it was kind of weird that that one building is left out. That's just left out. I want to say that we reference it as the Isley building. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it is the Isley building. A, a hosiery, uh, some and sort a of there. manufacturing, you know. And it might be because they tore too. the. Pardon? It might be because they tore down the building beside it's the mix. A building. lot has to do oh. with and the so there's changes. A space between it. If you look at it above the windows, there's, I don't even know what you would call it, detail, but it is not in keeping with the historic preservation. So when there's modifications to a historic building, <coughs> it's not in keeping with the preservation, it's not eligible. But that's Probably speculation of, what, of their decision for doing that, correct? Um, it's not a speculation. It's not currently in. No, 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 no. Why they? Why those folks did? Why the consultant didn't suggest that it was included? So, uh, that's what I was told. That it is the character of the historic building. So they have to have a reference relative to the existing structure, and then the existing structure. What modifications and changes have occurred over time? But then okay. that would say a lot with the. But a lot of the so most of the buildings have changed over time like so that. I do have a specific question. Maybe maybe this one would help sort of bring our conversation full circle. If you go up North Main Street, where I mentioned the crematory, and then I mentioned um, State Farm Building, right? Pictures document that the State Farm Building, as it sits today, was how it sat thirty years ago, twenty years ago that there has not been a modification to the windows. So from a historic preservation, that is that identity of that building in our community. So to keep with that, bringing them underneath the purview of the HRC does not, it would help create a layer to where someone can't go in and um, instead of replacing all the windows, they reduce the size of the window to just be like a third. Because mm -hmm. you can see where I'm going, like property owners is an expense to them for some of these features to maintain them. So then there's ways that they can modify stucco, putting up false walls, not replacing <coughs> dental molding and cornices, but going back with something that's like a version that had nothing to do with but, the original architecture. But isn't I, the original architect still underneath where if they, they can't should get, give an opportunity. They could go back and change it back, like the other building we just saw that 
it's, you know, we depends. could see where the moldings were for the windows, but they had changed them and put different stuff. But I don't think it's been permanently um, I, changed. I, I, I also found out find that, that, lot, that thought process is process challenging in that if you look at the opera building, that building has been changed significantly in terms of the windows, and yet it was not questioned or removed. Likewise, the McClure Furniture Building on Harden Street. Yeah. I don't think the opera windows have been. Yeah, remember. Oh yeah, we they are. The oh yeah, they're, big, the they're one big sheet of glass. That mm -hmm. should have been sash windows. Yeah. Those those really should have been. With the Mont White. Say so what? The Mont White, where the cooperative. That's what you're talking about. Yes. Okay. Those should have originally been. Those were originally sash windows. In 1800, you did not have uh, 1900 when that was built. No way. Uh, likewise, the McClure Furniture Building has been bricked in in many different ways, and that's a significant change of it too. So that's why there's different levels of pivotal yeah. contributing or feel. Um, and I'm so sorry. that that you know, this takes you to a different level of what the historic significance documented is of the building as it stands today. That'd be good to <coughs> that'd be good to hear their their comments on on that. And, and, and then, it if the opportunity presents itself and they're available, would you guys even entertain like having a Zoom interface with them and during our February meeting? That would be good. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, but if you read this letter, as they were doing the historic register properties, if the owner didn't want to be in he didn't right. have to be he in so you don't in. know that who owned yeah. osley mill didn't say i don't want to be in there well, we i don't shouldn't. want to do it yeah, well, well but well, we, 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 we it should be not. in the record if it was stated the owner it should be in there it should be in their minutes somewhere that it has been the owner declined, declined that was the, case, the right yeah. to be in but i wouldn't see a person not wanting to be a part of the historic district but that may have happened but if so then there should be oh, still a paper when, trail of that being said, when was the historic history set up, Mary? Do you know, Carrie? Not, Mary. I don't know. From <laughs> looking back in the notes, it looks like over 15 years ago, but not much more than maybe 20. But I can um, see if I can find yeah, that. Yeah, 15. 15. Well, last, we were on. Anyway. Was it the last 20 years or something I saw somewhere? Maybe well, it's in this email. We set up the historic district. It's been 15 years ago. I was the first time I was on the board, and it's been here longer than that. So, um, See, I saw it somewhere when it was exposed. I suspect the, last the reason it has been changed. Really. I suspect the reason why the Isley building wasn't included the first time around, and I heard rumor of this, was that it wasn't old enough at the time. Oh, it's it's old. Yeah, it's it's old enough. It has to be fifty years old to be included. That when that is one question I had going up North Main. Oh, it stopped there at Parker and didn't go all the way up to Providence Church. And I'm like, what? And they oh, said, because many. those, that was when we were trying to get the historic district extended. Those, when they did that inventory, those houses between Parker and Providence Church were not 50 years old. Now they are, but in the 80, 80 something, when they did set up the second historic district, the the national one, right. which the after North you Maine. leave this one, the national one that goes on up Maine and down Albright and whatever, um, it wasn't 50 years old. 1999 was first old. First 1999. <coughs> mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's when they were it pushed through. So they might've started a bit earlier than that. <clears throat> it sounds like we need to talk to those yeah, folks. The fact that they did not come back, all, all of these age things is, is one is one thing and the changes I understand. But the, the process, the fact that they did not return to Graham, 
Um, no, no, that doesn't sit yeah. well. Yeah. Maybe it's my military background. But, <laughs> and, and, and even if it's following the rules, there, there's, you know, UCC, OPS right. says right here, I'm following it. And by the way, I'm letting you know. Right. That courtesy could have been extended because I'm sure they're not doing this for free. Right. Well, we're, we, we're the ones. I don't, I don't think we're that's the ones okay. that requested it. And in a sense, the commission were the, their bosses, basically, not this. I mean, the city, yes, we're the city, but we're the ones that requested and asked for it. This thing got a courtesy. They, they should have indicated right. with an update because I do remember, as, as my partners here remember, mm -hmm. the presentation, and it certainly was not a finished one at the time. And that was during the time I think I was observing. You supposed to, mm -hmm. when you started off, you come in, you observe, and then it was you a new get nominated. Right. But uh, yeah, we, I yeah. never heard anything else. No, there from wasn't. That. There was nothing since then. So, uh, and I, I would like to say thank you for answering all these questions. Yeah. We've been throwing questions at you <laughs> that really should be going to the consultant. Sure. Um, and you've been fielding them ma uh, masterfully, <laughs> and I appreciate that greatly. That's yes, Mary. But please hear me out. Um, if it's one question to fifty questions. I, I can only, you know, extend what you guys are inquiring about as if you let me, you know, be aware of it. So please send me however many questions you have. I'm going to have it throw another one out there. Okay. So this is the, we have two historic national, we have two <coughs> national historic registry districts in town. This is the uh, commercial, remember, the commercial one. And then there's a res residential one. Mm -hmm. Um. Did they consider the residential one at all? We didn't have the money, but we could only pay for so right. much. And so we it was only into the commercial. And this is a stepping stone to get us towards the CGL, if I'm saying those initials correctly. What's the CGL? Um, a certified it was commercial driver's license. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I will right. also um, get back to you on what that stands for. <laughs> I know if that I understand correctly, having that um, recognition also opens up for not only notoriety, but for funding. Funding and, is the big thing. Yep. Yeah. Because they, uh, if we had it, they would have, we could have gotten a grant or applied for a grant to pay for this. Correct. But, but they wouldn't allow us because we had we had been so long for us to have done it. So once if this all goes like we want it to, then we'll be certified in their mind. And then we could maybe go and ask for money to do a survey of the, the other area. I would like to note that. Um, the house next door to me is a Graham Academy. It's been put on the, it's been bought. And I suspect it's getting ready, it was sold for land value. <coughs> um, and so our historic district is not, our, our residential historic district has not been surveyed and brought up to standard of, of any sort since 1990 something. Perhaps it's time, even if the city has to write the check for us to do that. We're facing a lot of res a lot of residential pressures for growth and things like that. And for my street, when I bought two years ago, we had a hard time finding a comp because nothing had sold in, ten, in, in a number of years. Mm -hmm. This year, four out of the five houses on my block will have sold. Mm -hmm. Right. And so we perhaps it's time the city considers and takes into consideration its historic dis yeah. residential district. I know that's not. Yes. Property, so if there's but, consensus among the other commissioners, um, a a best practice path would be that there's a draft letter that's from the commission that then where the city's resources come in is we had the tools to identify. Um, draw a circle it's going to go to this radius of homes and then we can pull the addresses and we can send the letter 
So if that is something that the commission, because it has to go before the residents, right. you guys sitting here speaking for homeowners and property owners. Right. So if you educate and bring awareness, it may be, again, if there's a collective decision to move in this direction outside of what we do in our um, HRC meetings, but to bring a neighborhood meeting together, you guys being experts, educating them about the value of that and what that means, and then getting that collective consistency of the property owners. And then, yes, the city is one avenue for receiving funding. Maybe there's other avenues for matching. Because in the end, a benefit to a property owner residential is those tax incentives. Right. But only if they're willing redoing the house. There's no tax incentives unless you are redoing the house. The tax incentives are for repairs Renovation. that you do. Renovating, to your house. yeah. Right. Repair well, repairs. If you need to replace your roof. Right. But your, if, and that's gonna happen at some point in time. But yeah. So yeah, but it, it may not I'll be like honest with you, Carrie. <laughs> Carrie and I sat through this, what, five years ago, six years ago, whatever. They can't see this. They can't see that far. It was a nasty, nasty, nasty meetings with this group of people that we're trying to make this historic district out of. They can't see that far. And every one of them just about said to us, if I had no, because he said, you're already in a historic district and that we're not governing, it's national, but, and it's not governing, but you're already in a historic district. Every one of them said, if I had known that, I would have never bought the house, didn't they, Carrie? Well, you're not going to tell me what I can do with my property. If I'd known I was already in a historic district, I would never have bought the house. It's, it's it tough. ugly. It was ugly. It is tough. It's and ugly. You, I think, so, I mean, I don't, I think that um, it's a, something that has to be done maybe, but, but, then, but you have to, uh, we learned a lesson and you have to really, so, you have to be very educated. Everybody that has to be very educated and we have to Having a presenter from Shippo right. come and show, showing the yeah, benefits because yeah. seeing is believing. And I'm not discrediting yeah. what you guys experience. You have to have right. the right. But having a presentation can really wow you of going, oh, right. that's where I can benefit from it because they may not be able to see, you know, the forest for the trees. <coughs> um, I'm not, I don't have anything planned for renovations. Oh, but like Jerome was saying about Eventually. your roof. Yeah your windows, your front porch, your sidewalk, you know, little incremental things along the way. Um, so just in conclusion, um, great conversation along those lines too. You guys can probably do some side conversation just to talk about what happened back then. And if it is something that you guys want to pursue, it would not be under the umbrella of our business that takes place in here. But we actually, I mean, there could be like a, a, a task force, um, you know, subcommittee that there's support and you know, I'll be happy to work with you. I'm sure Justin would too. Um, and we can see how to move that forward. Because in the end, we don't want to see those structures modified beyond that historic preservation and um, ultimately to keep in that character. And then if they denied and if they reject it or whatever, um, then that should also be somewhere in the notes right. and then that could be you know eliminated right but the step that we are talking about taking is to have them to come back to us so we can discuss yes with the application with the application yeah. yes but as far as the residents that says well, i would have never bought us if that's the situation that's the situation right it's, you know we can't change that that's the homeowner's uh right but the other stuff is what we really need to kind of let them know you can't just bypass us. We did pay you. You, you just not something you did free. And then if it's not a board that can work aside with us, then we need to maybe consider down the road not using them again or right. getting someone else because you can't just step over us and just think it's okay. That's not good. Right. So my last update, as I'm sure you guys are aware, is um, there were changes with our council. Therefore, our council liaison 
is no longer um, a council member. So we'll um, more than likely be appointed a new council representative um, in the upcoming meetings. So as that comes <clears throat> to fruition, you may be at the meetings and be present and you know learn at the same time I do, or at our next meeting, there may be um, a new uh, council liaison that will update us on pertinent information from the council. Um, but just to kind of give you a peek looking forward, um, at this point in time is like what will be coming up is the budget planning. And so again, if um, chair worthy or um, vice chair Beaudry, if you guys could craft a letter and I'll be happy to help you, but just do you have a budgetary request? In the past, we've asked for the facade grant right. um, ceiling to be increased to 30,000. That can be our same request. You can pull it down, you can take it up, but those justifications so that whenever I'm um, presenting that before the new council, I'm again, the extension of your voice. So budget season is March, um, staff start making presentations and then it's final, um, the adoption happens in June. So with that, any other questions? Chair Worthy. Uh, yep. Uh, do you all have any other comment? Thank you, Mary. No. All right. Um, do I have a motion to adjourn? A motion to adjourn. A second. A second. All, all in favor, aye. 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 Thank you very much. I appreciate everything you did today. Thank you, Mary. And thank um, you, guys. I just. My extra phone. I think our tree was going to get picked up till the end of the week, but I put it out there Sunday night Where's and it got picked phone? up Monday. Right. I, I, think I think they do brush stuff on Monday. So, yeah, yeah, yeah,